today we're going to do linear perspective and we're going to use three vanishing points. I want you to write everything that I'm writing. I want you to draw everything that I draw. Now, if you need a refresher on your vocab words, you should review One Point Perspective. If you need a refresher on Two Point, then you should review your Two Point drawings because you need a good understanding of those before we go to Three Point. And this is actually called Three Point Perspective. Now, if you remember, one point perspective is when we start with a flat shape and we make it into a 3D shape using one vanishing point. Two point perspective is when you're standing at the corner and you start with that vertical line as your corner line. Three point perspective shows extreme height or extreme depth. We call it a bird's eye view or a bug's eye view. And your horizon line for this particular drawing, we're not even going to draw it. Our horizon line today is actually going to be the line that goes right across the top of our paper. Okay? And your vanishing points A and B have to be on that line so I'm going to put vanishing point A in this corner. And I'm going to put vanishing point B over in this corner. Because they A and B always have to be on the horizon line. Vanishing point C is your depth point. So I'm going to put vanishing point C way down here at the bottom of the paper in the middle against the bottom edge of the paper. Now I would like to point out, and you need to keep this in mind, remember what the horizon line does. It separates the sky from the land. So everything above this point, which means everything off of the paper, would be sky. It also means that everything on the paper is land. So would you ever see sky in this picture? And the answer is no, because there's no room. Okay? From the horizon line down is land. Now, if our horizon line is at the top and we're looking down on the land, is that a bird's eye view or a bug's eye view? Well, it would be a bird's eye view because you're up in the air and you're looking down. So, using your ruler, I want you to make a vertical line that lines up with point C. And I will call it my C line. And I'm actually going to put the letter C on the line so that you know exactly where the lines are going. Now, three-point perspective is exactly like two-point perspective except for one thing. All of your vertical lines in two-point perspective become your vanishing point C lines in three-point. So I have a C line and now I'm going to take the top and bottom to A just like I do in two-point perspective. And I'm not going to go all the way because I don't want to have to erase my guidelines too much. I'm going to take the top and bottom toward B. And it looks the same as two-point perspective right now, doesn't it? In two-point perspective, I would put a vertical here. But I need to use my C point and connect my distance lines this time. Every line you draw in three-point perspective 
is a distance line. That means it goes to one point or the other. Okay, I'm going to erase my guidelines that hang over. And notice every line I have drawn goes to a vanishing point, either A or B or C. And since I'm looking down on this, I can tell that it needs a top. And the top is the exact same as in two-point perspective. I need to see where my points of intersection are. And I need to use both vanishing points so that they intersect to make the back corner. So this is a B line, and this is an A line. And you're thinking to yourself, gee, that's easy. And it is, right now. And I'll tell you why it's easy. It's because your C line is right over your C point. It's right in the middle, like a vertical line. But, when you want a box out here, you still have to start with your C line. So let's make a C line and I'm going to make it so that it's outside of point C and B. Okay? Now this is the corner of my box, just like this was. I'm going to go toward A first. And I would like to remind you at this point, it's always A first. The top and bottom of your line, if it can, has to go toward A first. Then the top and bottom goes toward B. And my top will go toward B. But, look what happens with the bottom. It would draw through the shape. And if you remember, a line that would draw through the shape is an invisible line that we wouldn't normally see. So I'm not going to connect it toward B. Only one will go. I'm going to finish the other side with a C line. Erase my guideline. And the only part of this box I'm going to see is the side and the top. I'm not going to see the front. I'm not going to see the back. And if this is going toward B for the top, then the opposite side also has to go toward B. And if this side is coming from A, then the opposite side also has to come from A. And there's my box. So it gets a little more difficult when you go away from the middle of the paper. Let's try one over here. You always start with a C line. So here's my line. Vanishing point C. It's very important to remember that you go toward A if you can. Top and bottom toward A. Now look what happens when we have the top and bottom of C and we want to go toward B. It's going to draw across the front of the shape. And I don't want to do that. But I also notice if I line it up with B and draw away from B, then it'll work out. So here's vanishing point B and vanishing point B. So I have my corner line, C, top and bottom went to A. So I have the side of the box, I have the front, and I have the top. So for the two sides, they have to go by C. Okay, I'm going to erase.
erase my guidelines. And I'm still missing the top. And remember, they have to be opposite on the top. So if I have A here, then I have to have A on the opposite side. If I have B here, then I have to have B on the opposite side. Okay? Now, I want you to notice that we are looking down on these boxes and that your C line represents everything that shoots up off the ground. The C line actually shows how tall things are, just like a vertical line would. So, if you're going to draw anything that has height, the height has to come from vanishing point C. Anything. Anything that's flat, you use A and B, like the flat tops of the boxes are A and B. C is for height. Now, what happens if we put the horizon line at the bottom? Let's try it. Okay, here's my paper, and before my horizon line was the top. Well, let's say that my horizon line's the bottom now. It's actually the bottom line of the paper. A and B have to go on that line. So I'm going to put A and B in the corner. And C is going to go at the top in the middle, which is opposite of what we just did. Okay? Now, what I want you to realize is if the horizon line's at the bottom, remember what a horizon line does? It separates the sky from the ground. So on this particular drawing, there's no ground. It's all sky because the ground is off the paper. So let's see if we can make a box like we did before. I'm going to start with C. And I'm going to put the letters on so you know where they're coming from. Okay, top and bottom always goes to A first. A and A. Top and bottom always goes to B. B and B. Now, the sides show height, so they have to come from C. Remember, every line has to go to a vanishing point or come from a vanishing point. So if I were to ask you on a test what kind of lines are in three-point perspective, you would tell me distance lines. There's no verticals, there's no horizontals, they're only distance lines. Now notice there's part of this missing. It's the bottom because I'm looking up. And remember when we did the top, A and A were opposite and B and B were opposite. So I'm going to do that for the bottom too. So there's A and A and B and B. So now I'm looking up at a box. Now the same thing is true for outside of the line, outside of the line that A and C would make. So here's my C line. Top and bottom are going to go toward A. These are my A lines. Top and bottom, if I try to take it toward B, 
it's going to mess up the, the side of the box. So I'm going to see if I can take it away from B instead of toward B, and we'll see if that works. Okay, so I have B and B, and here's the corner of the box, just like this is the corner of this box. So the sides of the box, the height, comes from vanishing point C. So I'm going to connect my two B lines with a C line. I'm going to erase my guideline that hangs over, and I'm going to connect the A lines with a C line. And the bottom's missing again. So if it comes from B here, it has to come from B here. If it comes from A on this side, it also has to come from A on this side. Okay, we'll try one more over here. Start with your C line. Top and bottom is going to go toward A. Top and bottom is going to go toward B. And the bottom will go, but the top won't. It's an invisible corner. It goes on the inside. So I'm probably only going to see the side and the bottom. So this is going to be these were going to A. So I'm going to make the other side using vanishing point C and I'm going to see what happens. Now it looks like I'm missing the bottom. So there's B and B. And here's A, which means that A has to go on the opposite side. Okay, so here's three boxes with the horizon line at the bottom. So if you were standing and looking up, this is what it would look like. If you're up in the air looking down, this is what it would look like. Okay, so remember when you're drawing in three-point perspective, Every single line you draw has to go to A, or B, or C. To practice your three-point perspective boxes, there are quiz sheets that you have to complete. And I would like to demonstrate some of the boxes on each quiz sheet so you sort of know which way to go. Sometimes it can be confusing at first until you get the hang of it. So when we're drawing, in three-point perspective. On your quiz paper, A and B are at the top, which means that the horizon line is where A and B is, and vanishing point C is at the bottom. If the horizon line is at the top, that means everything this way is sky, and everything below the line is land which means I'm going to be looking down on these boxes, which means I'm going to be able to see the top. So I'm going to do three boxes to show you how to do it, and then you're going to complete the other seven. Now I want to tell you before we start, you either get the box right or you get the box wrong. If you make one mistake on the box, it will be considered incorrect. I also want to remind you that every single line you draw has to go to a vanishing point, either A or B or C. So right now, we're going to start with the easy one here. And it is a C line. So the first thing I need to do is take the top and bottom toward vanishing point A. 
Now I don't want big long lines because all the boxes will overlap and I want them to be individual boxes. So I'm going to go toward B. So I have my C line as my corner. The top and bottom are going to A and top and bottom to B. And now I have to finish by vanishing point C. So I'm going to make my sides, and remember the C line shows height. I'm going to make the sides of my box by vanishing point C. Now that leaves the top. Remember, A should be opposite of A, and B should be opposite of B. So this corner is going to go toward B, and this corner is going to go toward A. And then for your quiz I want you to erase your guidelines so that only the box shows. You don't have to put the letters. I'm putting the letters to help you, but you do not. I'm only grading on whether you draw the box correctly or not. I want to remind you too the C lines in the middle are easier and the C lines that go away from the middle are harder. So what some of my students have done to keep them from getting confused in the past is that they will take each line toward A first and then go toward B next. And sometimes that seems to help. I am going to do this line so we can see how to do it. This is the corner of my box. I am going to go toward A first. You should always go toward A first. Remember A is the first letter of the alphabet and so you need to use it first. It will save you a lot of confusion later. If you can't go toward B, you can go away from B. So I have my A lines I have my B lines, and now I need my C lines to show height. My top is missing. Remember A and A and B and B, they have to be opposite. So this corner is going to go toward A and this corner is going to go by B. Okay? I'm going to do one more and then you're going to complete the rest. All ten have to be completed before you turn them in. This is your C line. Top and bottom is going to go toward A first. A and A and then toward B. B and B. Sides come down by C. I'm going to erase my guideline so I don't get confused. And I'm missing the top. A and A and B and B. Okay, so I have done three boxes for you. Remember, every line you draw has to go to a vanishing point. Remember, we're looking down, so every box you draw, you should be able to see the top of. After you've gone toward A, you either go toward B or away from B. And if you do that, things will work out pretty good. Remember, this is a bird's eye view. 
we're looking down. Good luck. Now on the back of your paper, the horizon line is at the bottom. I have points A and B down here, which means everything this way would be land and everything this way would be sky. Okay, so I'm going to do three of these for you to get you started, and then you can finish them. I think I'm going to do this one first. This is a C line. I'm going to take the top and the bottom toward A first. See how skinny it is? Sometimes to make sure that I don't lose the top and bottom of the C line, I'll mark it. I'm going to line up with point B now, and I can't go toward B, so I'm going to go away from B. going to line up my A lines, and this one's too small to even write the letter A on, by C, and connect them. And see how thin it is right there? This is an A line, and this is an A line, and this is a C line. And then I'm going to connect the B lines by vanishing point C. And since I'm looking up, I should be able to see the bottom. And this is an A line, so this has to be an A line. This is a B line, so this has to be a B line. you'll erase your guidelines so that they're not confusing. Okay, there's one. Let's do this one. Top and bottom goes toward vanishing point A. The bottom will go toward B. Let's see, the top might too. Okay, so we have B and B. Sides are by C. It's going to be really skinny again on this side. And the bottom there's B here so there has to be a B there there's an A there so there has to be an A on the opposite side I forgot to erase my guideline This one, top and bottom goes toward A first, and I can't go toward B on this one, but I can go away from B, so I'll do that. So these are A, these are B, sides are by C. So I have a C line here, and I have a C line here. There's A and A, and B and B. Okay, so there's three there for you that are complete.
you have seven more to finish. They're either all right or they're all wrong. So that's 10% each. Remember, every line you draw has to go to a vanishing point. And you should be able to see the bottom of every box that you draw on this side. Now we're going to do a three-point perspective city. And you have to think with me, if we're going to do a city and it's on the ground, where is the horizon line going to be? Is it going to be at the top or is it going to be at the bottom? It's going to be at the top so that we can look down on the ground. So my horizon line is actually going to be the top edge of my paper with A and B on the horizon line and C at the bottom in the middle. So go ahead and put your points on, please. And your points shouldn't be very large because if they're too large, your buildings will be off. I need to label that C. Let's start with the easy building in the middle. And when you make buildings in three-point perspective, you need to make short lines, not tall ones. We're going to take the top and bottom toward A. Top and bottom toward B. Remember, every line has to go to a vanishing point, which means that every line is a distance line. Sides by C. And then I need to see the top. I need to use both points so that I can make the top of my box. So I'm going to use point B and point A in such a way that they intersect. Okay, there's my first building. Okay, let's make a building over here. And remember, you have to start with a C line. So here's my corner. I need to take the top toward A. I need to take the top and bottom. And I can't go toward B, but I can go away from B. Sides by C. Every line is a distance line. So if you draw a line and you didn't use point A, B, or C, you can pretty much count on it being an incorrect line. Okay, I need the top because I'm looking down. If this side's going to A, then this side also has to go to A. If this side's going to B, then this side has to go to B. Okay, now let's try building over here. Start with your C line, top and bottom toward A. I can take the top toward B right here. If I try to take the bottom, it would draw through the shape, which means it's an invisible corner. So we're going to take the side down by C. And I need the top. This is going toward B, so this side has to go toward B. This is an A line, so the opposite side has to be an A line. Okay, so I have three buildings here. Now, if you want to make that cool ledge that we did in one and two point perspective, 
instead of a vertical line at the back corner, it actually has to be a line that goes to point C. And then line up the bottom with A and line up the bottom with B. If you wanted ledges over here, sometimes they get tricky because here's a corner that goes to a C line and here's a corner that goes to a C line. So they would be connected by an A line and they would have to come down by B. and you wouldn't be able to see this part of the ledge. So you have to be careful when you do the ledges on the sides because they're a little more difficult than right in the middle. Okay, windows and doors. Windows and doors, instead of a vertical line, you have to use a C line. And these are going toward vanishing point A. So the top and bottom of your windows have to go toward vanishing point A. And the sides aren't vertical anymore. The sides are your C line. Let's try some over here. Okay, these are all C lines, and look, this is an A line and this is an A line, so everything on this side would have to come from A. And then the sides of the windows have to come back down by C. Okay, so windows on this side come down by C and then they go up to B. And like I said, when I first started learning perspective, sometimes I would get confused about which point to use. Look at the top and bottom of the side that you're on and use the point that they're going to. Okay, now we're going to do sidewalks. And you'll be happy to know that the sidewalks are just like in two-point perspective because your C point is your height. It shows things that are shooting up off the ground. And sidewalks are flat. And A and B are for flat things that don't shoot up off the ground. Okay, so there's your main sidewalk there. And then sometimes it gets a little tricky down here. So we'll do this one. I'm going to go A and make it a little longer than both corners. And then it has to go back toward B. And it's going to hit the building there. And it's going to hit the building there. And that's all you're going to see of it. Let's try this one. I'm going to have to use vanishing point a to decide how wide I want my sidewalk to be and I know that it needs to be longer than the corners. Then I'll take B, go toward the building until I hit it and stop, and B and go past the back corner and then back up to A. So it gets a little tricky on the buildings that are in the corners.
and you need to be able to picture in your head sort of what's happening. The sidewalk cracks are the same. One side will use vanishing point B and the other side will use vanishing point A. forget to make sure you're lined up with that point every time. Sometimes you get in a hurry and forget to use it. And the sides are going to go by A. Until you can't see them anymore. Okay? Roads are from A and B, just like in two-point perspective. There's a road. I'm going to stop my road here because I'm going to turn it up and go toward B. And this one's going to come down by B. And then I'll do A again. And there I can drive down this way or I can go that way. Now remember, you have to use A and B for the roads. So if you wanted to have a road that goes around, you have to go by A to make the corner turn. I'll show you what I mean. Here's vanishing point A, and I want to turn. And then I'm going to pick up out here. And then I'm doing another vanishing point A. Erase this. So I can drive down the road and turn and go back behind the building. And if I want it to connect again, I need to use vanishing point B. Remember that one has to be longer than the other in order to do that. So now you can drive around the block. Now there's some things that you need to understand about three-point perspective that are easy in one and two-point perspective. In one and two-point perspective, if you wanted to draw a tree, you just drew it. Unless it were a row of trees, and then you would have to use the vanishing point for how tall they were, and then they would get smaller as they go back. But if I want a tree right here, the trunk of the tree has to lean toward vanishing point C. Here's the trunk, here's the roots, and then the branches are going to, you can sort of freehand them, but you have to realize that you're looking down on them. Okay? So the trunk of a tree would have to come from vanishing point C. If you wanted to do a street light, it would have to come from vanishing point C. Okay, let's say, have you seen the street lights in Hagerstown? They're sort of L-shaped. Okay, so I'm going to make one that's sort of L-shaped here. I want you to see what I mean. There's an L-shaped one. And then 
the street light that would hang down is a box. So you have to do your C line and take the top and bottom to A and take the top and bottom toward B. Sides by C and the top by A and B, just like any other box except it's tiny. So if you wanted to do a street light and have it hanging like in Hagerstown, that's how you would do it. Anything that has height that you can measure how tall it is has to come from vanishing point C. Even a person, the trunk of their body has to lean towards C. Grass has to lean toward vanishing point C. Flowers. Now if you wanted to draw a pond, you could freehand it and you could have a pond and you don't have to worry about your points because it's flat on the ground. Anything that comes up off of the ground, the trunk or main part of it has to lean toward vanishing point C.